This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to derive the derivative of the cosine function, and I'm going to jump right in. So let's take a look at how you could write this. Now, here's some old school writing. Nah, not really. But if you're going to take the derivative of the cosine function, this is somehow or sometimes how it's written in this with the derivative with respect to x of the function. So let's see, using the definition of derivative right there, I am going to say it is the limit as h approaches zero. Um, and we replace the function, the x of the function with x plus h. And then we subtract the original function. You know, this is how it goes with all derivatives and we put the h in the denominator. So we're now going to play around with this. So if I continue playing around with this, I'm going to take the limit as h approaches 0. Uh, I'm going to use the sum formula to expand that. So it's cosine cosine sine sine. If you remember this from trig. And you should have seen this. Cosine cosine sine sine. So it's x h. Uh, xh. Just a simple uh, expansion using the sum formula in trig and it's always the opposite. So if it's a sum, it's a difference in the expansion. Okay, and of course we still have this minus cosine of x. Okay, and then the whole thing, it's hard to make a straight uh, line with this tablet. Okay, so now the algebra begins when we start to play around with this. So, okay, let's use a little bit of algebra. All right, what I like to do is to imagine these two terms, and I'm going to pull out the cosine function. So you have, in other words, factor. I'm going to factor those guys. So what would be left? I would have cosine of h minus this, which would be, if I took the cosine out, it would be minus 1. Okay, and then I still have the minus sine x, sine h. Boy, my handwriting is definitely better in this video than it was when I was deriving the derivative of the sine function. All right, you've been warned. Okay, so here you go. What are we going to do now? Um, I'm going to take the, maybe I should have back up here a little bit. I'm going to, going to imagine um, Taking, dividing this, um, I should say not dividing, to be clear with my terminology. I'm going to separate this fraction into two separate fractions. Okay, and maybe I should show this. In the spirit of showing everything. Alright, so I'm going to have this fraction all over h. And then I'm going to subtract the other fraction. Sine x sine h uh, all over h. And yes, I'm taking the limit of the whole thing. So I've just separated this fraction to two separate fractions, right? How do you combine two fractions? Well, if they have a common denominator, you, you combine the numerators and there you go. I'm right back to my original. Most people don't see it in that direction. Uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, give myself some extra room, and continue on. Now you'll see at this point that I do have the limit of a difference. If I take the limit of a difference, it's the same thing as the difference of the limits. Yep, so that means I could take the limit of this fraction and then take the limit of this fraction and subtract the two limits. Now when I take the limit of this fraction, you'll notice that this cosine of x, there's no h variable in it. So I could pull that out. It, it is a constant with regard to the limit. Okay, so here I get uh, h goes to 0 of this cosine h minus 1 all over h. Okay, minus. Now I'm going to take the limit of this fraction. And again, I got the sine of x. It's a constant with respect to the limit. Boy, you have to understand limits 
to understand what I'm doing here. Okay, and uh, I've got this sine h over h. There you go. All right, so now this is where it gets interesting. So now I've got to convince you of what the answer is to this limit, and I have to convince you as to what the answer is of this limit. Because I'm taking the cosine of x times this limit minus the sine of x times this limit. All right, well, mathematically, not so easy to be able to prove to you. You should know what this limit is because it, it does come up um, in earlier, uh, usually in a pre-calculus class or maybe in the beginning level of a calculus class. Anyway, to make it really clear to figure out what this is, just take a look at the graph. There it is. There's the graph. So when you take a look at that graph, as uh, the variable gets close to zero, I guess I forgot to put the zero in there. In other words, as the variable gets close to the origin, what does the curve do? Well, if you take a look at it, it heads towards one. There you go. So there's the limit of this function, one. All right, let's erase that. Now let's get to this function. If we were to graph this function, there you go. Um, you could see that as we head towards zero, zoop, we head towards zero, towards the origin, you'll see that the curve heads towards zero. Really clear to see with that function. All right, let's get rid of that. All right, now let's go and figure out what the answer is. Well, anything times zero is zero. I've got one times the negative sine of x, that's just negative sine of x. So negative sine of x plus zero is just negative sine of x. Okay, that's it. There you have it. Okay, so uh, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that if you did that. Also, go back to mathguide.com where you have literally hundreds of lessons, interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. We're the best in the field, okay? All right, have a great day. You deserve it. Man, it's really cool when you see the sine and the cosine curves together, or at least if you were to draw the cosine curve and look at the derivative and look for the, oh yeah, the tangent lines at certain points, you would see it is the opposite of the sine of x.